round against the sixth ranked Pitt Bears, ranked number one in the nation for a number of weeks. They were the sixth overall seed in this tournament, ranked two in the ABCA poll. When we say it was an upset, it was an upset for the ages. We're underway, 23 in black, Jordan Thompson attacking from the pin and she does that so very well. We mentioned the NCAA kills leader, 6.4 kills per set for Jordan Thompson, the senior, the lone senior out of Edina, Minnesota. And these Bearcats earning an at-large bid from the American Athletic Conference where Jordan Thompson was the freshman of the year and then the three-time unanimous AAC player of the year. And I think an injury was the only thing that yes. stopped her. Meanwhile, number 23 in white, that's Caitlin Horde. Get to know her name quite a bit, just a sophomore for the Nittany Lions. And when we say, when we say a premium on ball control, understand that if you want to run your middles, you have to have a two or three option pass in the hands of your setter. And that would be Blossom wearing 13 in white for this team but they want to feed Horde as much as possible and so the passes have got to be at the net where they can get her involved in the offense. Lauren Clark, just a freshman starting for Penn State, played in the two matches so far in the NCAA tournament and the block on that left side and standing tall is Tori Gurrell. And she's an interesting part of that story in terms of less production from the left side for Penn State. She plays on the left side for them in her redshirt senior year but has always been a middle. So a huge transition in her career to learn that outside hitter position, but one of her strengths is obviously going to be her blocking. And coming off of that back row attack is Maria Mallon. For all of the accolade and attention that Jordan Thompson gets, it's Maria Mallon who's kind of been that unsung hero. What a compliment she has been offensively to Jordan Thompson. As only a sophomore, she's a two-time AAC first-team selection. That sails too long. Point goes to Penn State. Johnny Parker, the sophomore out of Castown, Ohio. So she's playing against the Cincinnati Bearcats out of her home state on the serve and into the net. And Cincinnati literally dodges a bullet there because Johnny Parker has one of the most dangerous serves in collegiate volleyball. So that one into the net and Cincinnati can breathe a sigh of relief. Thompson, who returns for this group. You mentioned just how many awards she's won in conference. Three-time AAC Player of the Year, but they see the Canadian, Tori Garrell, get after it there. Jordan Thompson is just one of those players that you love to talk about and you think about her coming from, you know, Big Ten country in the Midwest and really etched her name in the history books at Cincinnati. Heck and Mueller to that left pin, Maria Mallon on the swing. Burrell going right back. Nice dunk, dig there by Mackenzie Connor. Three in red, the Libero jersey for Cincinnati. Burrell again, and she looks mighty comfortable as she continues to get her feet wet and settled in on that outside hitter position. And Tiffany, doesn't she look like a red shirt senior? Because as we said, they haven't relied on production from the left side all year for their success. And yet right now, early here in this regional, Tori Gurrell is making her presence known. Cincinnati draws within one. 27 and six on the season. They won the American regular season title before being taken down in the first ever AAC championship to UCF. Bump set there from Kendall White and Johnny Parker out of the back row, dug out by Fauska. And you see how high Jordan Thompson gets. She's just so tough to defend. And the point on the floor goes to Point. Cincinnati and I think there's a challenge there as to whether that ball was touched or not. So the point awarded to Penn State there, but that lull in the gym, everyone waiting to see if Alvy was going to pick up that green challenge card as the players for Cincinnati were quick to look to their coach and say, we think there was a touch on this one. So Alvy has gone to her green card and they will challenge a touch on this Penn State block as Jordan Thompson takes that big rip out of the background. You see as soon as she lands, she makes that Volleyball motion that everyone knows for touch as she's landing. She thinks she got a piece of those hands. 
I'll be honest with you, in real time, it looked like there was a touch off the Penn State fingers, but when you slow it down a little bit, it's a little bit harder to see as coaches are awarded three challenges per match. And these are the things that you can challenge, whether it was touched or not, is one of them. Doesn't affect whether you have timeouts or not. You win it, you win it, you lose it, you lose it. And Molly Alvey going to it early on. And that's how important these early points in set one are. And Coach Alvey so aware of that. She does not want to allow Penn State to start to run away. She wants to keep right in this first set, step for step, with that big giant that we've talked about in Penn State. Here it is again, a look at Jordan Thompson's big swing from the back row. And realize, if you're new to the sport of volleyball, that three-meter line, Jordan Thompson or anyone taking a swing out of the back row, has to jump from behind that three-meter line. They can land anywhere. And I always think that back row attack is such a great look at the athleticism of some of these young ladies as you see their ability to go up and get the ball, the big swing, and how close they land to the net. And, Missy, there has to be irrefutable evidence. You right. have to find that, yes, without a shadow of a doubt, we need to overturn the call. If not, the call will stand as it is. And currently, it's in favor of Penn State being awarded the point. And that's why the call on the floor becomes so important, because if the video evidence is inconclusive, that call on the floor will stand. And at this point, the point has been awarded to Penn State. And so if there is inconclusive video evidence, the score on the scoreboard will remain, and Penn State will have that two-point edge here early in set one. I'll tell you what's so unique about these two teams meeting in the NCAA tournament is the fact that they met in the first ever NCAA tournament back in 1981. This is just their second meeting overall in the tournament. And Cincinnati is 0-5 all-time against Penn State, but realize Coach Alvey in 2002 was a grad assistant for Temple. And her team at Temple took on Penn State in the second round of the tournament and knocked the Nittany Lions out. Oh, wouldn't she like to repeat that performance again? The challenge does not go in her favor, so she loses that. Penn State retains the point, and they still hold to the lead in this first set. On the serve after that short delay, and Garrell is a net, excuse me, serves it into the net. Hampton now into the backcourt for Garrell there, 15 in white, a defensive specialist. One of two specialists used along with Pete Holcomb for PSU. And then Kendall White, number three, their Libro in the dark blue jersey is a mainstay defensively for the Nittany Lions, the two-time defensive player of the year in the Big Ten. And the point goes in favor of the Nittany Lions, speaking to just the effect of those defensive specialists and what they mean. Jenna Hampton there handling the ball and serve, receive, and allowing Penn State to get into their system, running their offense as Gabby Blossom, who's on the serve. And that was a big kill there for one in white. Lauren Clark for Penn State. She played in only 32 of 109 sets this year, but has played now in all eight sets of tournament play so far because Kathy not playing. Allison Kathy, a sophomore for Penn State, has not played in the tournament so far, and we've been told she is day-to-day. -day. Powerful attacker on the bench for the Nittany Lions. Tough serve there from Maria Allen. Held and handled by Penn State, but out of bounds, and it's tied at seven apiece. Maria Mallon so dangerous from that service line, and we saw just what she was able to do. Ran off a four-nothing run against Pitt, and then was able to get the final kill of that match yes. against the Panthers. She was huge from the service line, and I loved Coach Alvey's comment after that Pitt match. She said, you have to attack, but you can't miss. She said, so read between the lines as to what that means for you. Because for each player, that's different how aggressive you can be to serve, to get the team out of system without missing. And she said, we talk candidly to our players like that. And there is a second piece of that middle attack. We saw Ford already for Penn State. That time, Serena Gray out of the middle. Both sophomores, both started a season ago for Penn State. Now they've returned with a year's worth of experience. They're even that much more dangerous. And remember, Gray missed last year's NCAA tournament because of an injury. And how about getting pumped up from the middle? 
Damiana Chabacapa. Huge rip from Charbakva out of the middle. And they talked about the fact that her offense has come along with Oliver in their gym now. A transfer for Clemson, number 21, Adria Oliver, will play opposite her in the middle. She's on the court now. You'll see her out there wearing, um, wearing that, that jersey of number 21. Thank you, Tiffany. Help me with numbers. <laughs> because she is so aggressive offensively. And they said that's really helped their other middle blockers to follow her lead. The, the uh, offensive play in the middle has been become much more competitive in their gym. Hecken Mueller and Mallon just tried to push it over. That soft touch doesn't go her way. Penn State, first team to 10. They have a two-point advantage as Lauren Clark is back to serve one of six freshmen on this team. Champlain, Minnesota. Blossom to Hoare right there in the hands of Connor. Fauska just tipping it over and Fauska found the sweet spot. Carolina Fauska, the freshman out of Norway. This is a team who we've talked about the fact that they upset Pitt to come to this regional. They were beat by Pitt early in the season, in fact, swept. And in that early match, Fauska hadn't really even secured her position in the lineup. This is a team that was still searching for their identity. And because George Thompson is such a great player, she spent her summer with USA Volleyball. So she came late to the gym, and they were still really trying to find their identity and find their rhythm. And Fauska is one of their most improved players on the course of the season, as you now see her follow it up with an ace serve. Responsible for the last two points for the Bearcats. We're knotted at 10 in this Stanford Regional. Close to the net, Hill and Johnny Parker. Try to get a swing out of Hecken Mueller. Setting Adria Oliver, and Oliver, you talked about the athleticism, how she boosts them in the middle with her offense. Nice job on the slot. And Hecken Mueller, the delivery from their setter, number 15, only a sophomore. Coaches said, I don't know what it is about Hecken Mueller that no one else has seen because she recognizes her as a huge talent who still has two years left in her program. Cincinnati with the lead on a 3 nothing run. Hecken Mueller setting Oliver. And the point for Penn State. And that ends that run. Cincinnati looking at the up official, hoping that he was going to call a touch there on the block of Gorell. In fact, Jordan Thompson making her way over to the up official to actually ask that very question. The up official is going to say that the ball was hit into the net tape and that Gorell never had a piece of that. But obviously, if I'm Jordan Thompson, I'm going to go over and ask a few questions myself. If nothing else, you're going to slow down the momentum of this Penn State team. Obviously, the official had a really good look at it. And we saw it from our net cam. This call was on point. And Parker, you talked about how tough of a serve that was. Handled by Cincinnati and great offense from the Bearcats. Did you see the reaction from Jordan Thompson after? Even, even greater reaction from Jordan Thompson. As she is loving this NCAA tournament. This is her last shot, giving it all she's got. We've mentioned the fact that she's from Minnesota left Big Ten country to join the Cincinnati Bearcats. You know, we said, hey, why, why Cincinnati? And you could tell that she really loves this coaching staff, loves this program, said she saw the opportunity to be a part of something and build something great. And Coach Albee says, hey, it's not only been good for us, it's been good for her, but a mutually beneficial relationship it's been for them both. But you can tell that her own heart is with the Bearcats. When I think, when you look at just how she is blossoming, come on. Sometimes players show early, you know, the skills that they have. For a player like Jordan Thompson, you know, to some degree, perhaps she was a little overlooked. And by the time that she got to Cincinnati and came on with the coaching staff that really welcomed her and honed her skills, you've seen she's just skyrocketed since. Interesting that she spent her summer with USA Volleyball, and we can talk more about that later. But because of that, she joined this team late, you know, right as they're going into camp. And she said, I didn't know half the players on the team. They've got two transfers, a lot of young players out on the court, and they had a camping experience as a team that she said she really used as a weekend to bond with her teammates and to learn about them off the court. And I think that says so much about her personality, her care for her teammates. 
right to Parker, hits her in the crawl and then bounces down. And Cincinnati takes hold of that lead once more. Johnny Parker, such an important piece to that Penn State team. On the other side, you look at another sophomore in Armani Hickemuller out of Cincinnati. So going to her hometown school, and she's put up great numbers. NCAA leader in assist and assist per set. Since it to 15, they have a two-point advantage here in the Stanford Regional. And Jordan Thompson says, I'm ready to play lights out. it was for the Cardinals in Austin, Texas. They move on and they did it without their top offensive player in Melanie McHenry. She's been out with a knee injury since October. She's led them in every statistical category, but it didn't matter. Danny Busboom, Kelly, and the Cardinals are moving on. And I've been told that on the way over, the players for Cincinnati watching that match on the bus have it pulled up on their phone. And I tell you, that had to give them a little confidence boost. Like, hey, Louisville did it, we can do it too. This Cincinnati team was actually taken down by Louisville in five sets earlier this season, a very competitive match in which McHenry is still a piece of that. Johnny Parker coming back, Mallon kept it alive. Bump set from Thompson, Fausca going for it. Sure, couldn't get to it in time. And Fausca with another kill now leads Cincinnati in kills. And interestingly, we talked about the fact that Penn State was that three-headed monster and that, Tom, that Cincinnati would rely on Thompson. But right now, the reason Thompson, the reason Thompson and Cincinnati are up in this one is the fact that they're spreading the offense around. And the leader in kills for Penn State right now is Gorel on the left side. Gorel not on the floor, so Serena Gray says, I'll handle some of those kill duties if you need me to. Gray, the sophomore out of Temple City, California, inside the Los Angeles area. And Kauska going for it. And do you like this decision early on for Heckenbuehler to decide to just set more than just Jordan Thompson, knowing that she's going to be a focal point? Oh, it's fantastic. And not only is she choosing to spread it around, but look at the looks she's giving her players. Fausto with every opportunity to swing down the line there and avoid the block because of the perfect location she gets her head Fausto with four kills and will bring up the service ace for the Bearcats. Kristen Ficker, the freshman out of Cincinnati. Looking dangerous behind that service line and a timeout is quickly taken on the court by Penn State. Division one coached by wins and percentage. Never less than 22 wins in a single season. That's fantastic, just amazing. Well, when you sign up and you want to go to Penn State, you want to go there for that tradition, that history. Johnny Parker with the attack pushed over by Mallon on the other side. A free ball opportunity out of the middle was forward, kept alive by Heckenmuller, and then Fauska tried that cross-court shot, and it goes out of bounds. I wasn't even sure that Fauska was going to get a rip at that ball. It was put up there by Oliver on a bump set. It was pretty tight to the net and outside. I thought it was going to be trouble all the way. I thought Fausca did a great job. He was just getting a big swing at it. Russ Rose saw his team sweep Princeton and down Towson in the first and second rounds of the tournament to make it here. And the big block on that left side, and I think that was Tori Gurrell. Gurrell is elevating her game as she has done year after year in the NCAA tournament. And again, as a left side player this year, you know that her strength has got to be her blocking. She's played in the middle for Penn State her entire career. Last year, very limited minutes for her until, guess what, tournament time. 
when Gray went down with an injury and she was thrown right back into the middle and played every NCAA tournament match as a middle blocker for Penn State. This is a player with a whole lot of tournament experience. Yeah, I think back to that tournament last year when they faced off against Washington. She had eight kills, four blocks, two service aces, so impacting the game in a number of different ways. And there, just couldn't get to it. Maybe a little miscommunication there between the setter and Ford, and Ford misses on that opportunity. In serve receive for Penn State, you're consistently going to see them pass with just two passers. Always Kendall White, their libero, on half of the court, maybe more than half of the court that she covers as she cuts off Holcomb right there to pass that ball. So a lot on her shoulders because we said ball control would be a premium for the Nittany Lions in order to run their offense out of the middle as they prefer to do. So lots of passes from Kendall White, and there'll be a lot of pressure on her to keep them in system. Parker with the service error. It's 21-18 Cincinnati. And good news for Cincinnati. Penn, Johnny Parker just has not found her rhythm to the service line quite yet. And that's not to say that she won't. Jordan Thompson on the other side leading her team. On service aces. A tough one there. It was handled by Keaton Holcomb. Now Hector Miller pushes it out to Mallon. And Mallon just couldn't get it past. And how about Gabby Blossom, the setter, saying, come with it. Come with it. She is five foot nine. Their sophomore setter, a second team Big Ten selection. And she gets all of this one. Turns it right back in bounds and catches that in line. Mallon going at it again. This time fires and it stays in. And they're going to call a touch on the block here on Penn State, which would award the point to Cincinnati. But I think the sophomore Mackenzie Connor, the sophomore Libro out of Centerville, Ohio, is set to serve. Blossom sets Gray right to Thompson. No setter. Set. No setter on the floor for Cincinnati. They've gone with a bigger lineup, Tiffany. How about this? Throwing in Charbakova and Giarli across the front row, asking Giarli to go block on the right side. No setter on the floor. Their Libro just stepped in and bump set that ball outside to Mallon, who's able to come up with a big kill. So choosing a defensive over an offensive sub here to try to score these big points at the end of the first set. Well, you think about Molly Alvey. She knows her ball club better than anybody, and she's had great success with this team throughout the season. As we mentioned, regular season champs in the American Athletic Conference, and they also took down VCU and upset Pitt in the first and second rounds of the NCAA tournament. Do you like the decision I by like Coach it. Alvey? To I like it. That? It's gutsy, but I think that you know, these teams have gotten so good out of system. That's the name of the game in volleyball now. You can't afford to send free balls over the net. You certainly can't afford to do it at the regional level of play. And so somebody like Maria Mallon, she is not going to flinch if she gets a bump set from the lead row. That's commonplace for her. So if you can put a big block up in the net against Penn State and just give them a little something to think about, a little change up there, cause them to adjust their swing in some way, I think it was a gutsy move by Alvy, and I really like it. Right now, her team hitting 217 compared to 208 for Penn State. And in that timeout, Russ Rose spends his second of this first set. What's the discussion? What are the adjustments that the Nittany Lions have to make? You know, I think right now for the Nittany Lions, it's all about the Nittany Lions, and it's about staying in the system. We come back to their point producers being in the middle for them, and so there is that premium on ball control and right now Cincinnati doing a great job of going after the non Kendall White passer. Whoever's alongside her being asked to pass, they're going after that second passer and not allowing Kendall White to control first contact. They do it again here. Currently it's Holcomb. Holcomb Blossom Burrell and they were blocked. Charbakova alongside Giarli and the substitution pays off. That's what they were going for right there. Set point Cincinnati. 
in the opening match of the Stanford Regional. Now a substitution for Penn State that will allow them to pass three. We've seen them pass two. Three now. Block! And Cincinnati takes the first set. 25-11 seed Penn State Nittany Lions. And for Penn State, interestingly, their kills leader right now, Tori Gorell. She's having a great match, but I think what that means for Penn State is they're not at their best as a team because when they're at their best, the ball control is there and they're getting big time kills out in the middle. Clark to Mallon. Hexenmuller sets Jordan Thompson down, but dug out by Jenna Hampton. Hexenmuller going with Thompson again, this time just past Kendall White, the Hoover in the blue jersey for Penn State. And that is just a different swing. We've seen some big rips in this gym so far here tonight, but that one just looks different. Up over the block and lands in front of the defender. That's a whole nother angle, folks. Well, Cincinnati has won 26 of their 27 matches this season after taking the first set. And how about Maria Mallon on the service ace? How about the side spin on this ball? Looked like it was going to go wide and possibly long both. And it drops in. Huge rip from Maria Mallon. And obviously she understands what coach means when coach says, you got to go for it, but you can't miss. <laughs> Three service aces so far for the Bearcats. Mallon sets up Heckenmuller to Thompson on the approach and just dumped back down after it popped right back over the net. And the first set outside to Thompson, not ideal. As good as Heckenmuller's been, that one just a little bit off the net. So Thompson was early, had to make an adjustment, and she still nearly kills that ball. Just a tough serve once again from Mallon, Serena Gray. Here's Thompson once more. This time, the block of Penn State was ready for it. And again, the huge celebration from Gabby Blossom as she goes up and takes away that swing from Jordan Thompson. Part of the all-Northeast region team, sophomore center out of St. Louis, Missouri. Here goes Jordan Thompson off the block. Kendall White, Blossom, and Gray. And notice the first name you called that there first in that trio was Kendall White. Perfect pass from Kendall White into the hands of Blossom. And there comes that fast middle attack that we expect from Penn State. Gray, an All-American honorable mention in her freshman season. Meanwhile, you're looking at a two-time All-American in Jordan Thompson. And she continues to communicate with her setter. Realize she has played nearly her entire career with Jade Tingle as her setter. They played together at Northern Lights in Minnesota. They both went to Cincinnati together. So this is a brand new setter for her this year. After spending her entire summer with Team USA with some of the best setters in the entire world. And yet she, instead of ever being frustrated with this young team, Coach said she has come back and she was the rookie for Team USA. And she had people helping her along. And she's brought that experience back to Cincinnati and seen that as a challenge as to how she can help these youngsters along. She said, yeah, when I got back, I didn't even know half of my team. <laughs> Crazy. Meanwhile, that was an outstanding set from one side to the other side of the court for Johnny Parker. Yeah. Great opportunity for Penn State. They're trailing by one. Good effort there by Blossom. Here's Johnny Parker on the attack. Maria Mallon hits it up. Heckenmuller to Thompson. And the block again. There's Parker. Johnny Parker, the All-American. One of the captains for this group. And again, the ball a little off the net. You see that Jordan Thompson has to delay her approach. She starts to go for it and then has to slow down her approach so she doesn't get the most out of that swing. A tough serve from Jenna Gray, Jean Serena Gray, and Serena Gray on the service ace. And that gives Penn State a 5-4 lead here in this second set. 
And remember, Serena Gray, only a sophomore, injured a season ago in the NCAA tournament, so playing in her first NCAA tournament. Gray will rotate out. Carolina Fausca came over from Norway this past summer. She's transitioned in nicely to this group. And Caitlin Hoare just too strong out of the middle. Nothing wrong with that swing. That's exactly the look that Penn State wants just long off the arm of the court. Parker just tipped it over, almost kept alive by Adria Oliver. Instead, Penn State passed it 6-6. Six, six. Warren Clark, we mentioned, a freshman for this Nittany Lion team, was a three-time USA Volleyball All-American out of high school, a state champion in Minnesota. Heckin Mueller to Thompson. Thompson playing it off the hands. And a nice shot selection there from Jordan Thompson. Yeah, and I felt like she waited on her approach. She saw the set and then went for it. A little, little better set there from Heckin Mueller. She's able to get her on the net. Realize they're, in, they're a little more in system. So many of the balls that Jordan Thompson's going to take swings at, they're going to be out of system. So, of course, Heckin Mueller's not going to be in the best position to set her, her the ball in those out of system situations, but that's who they're going to get it to. Thompson who only had two kills in that first set has four here. And Caitlin Moore, watch out for her because when she heats up, she can get going. What a swing from Caitlin Hoare. Coach said she has the ability to be one of the best if she wants to do it. Allen was blocked and Gabby Blossom once again standing at five foot nine, but she has been so active on the block. Tell you what, go get yourself a feisty setter and a feisty libero and good things will happen. That's exactly what Penn State's got going in those two. She's got three blocks in this match. Gabby Blossom for the Nittany Lions. Johnny Parker into the net, no reaction from Coach Russ Rose, who says he was a little too hard on Johnny Parker a year ago in this tournament. He said maybe it was good for her development, but not for her performance. Very interesting. Remember, it was the Nittany Lions who fell to the Stanford Cardinal in the regional finals here a season ago. Out of that bump set back row attack from Jordan Thompson and make a little something out of nothing. Credit Thompson with the point that how about Malin in that rally? The ball set way too tight, dying inside. And she had to go up and just make something out of that. She extends the rally so that Jordan Thompson can get that swing eventually to finish it off. And she is hot in this set. She averages 6.4 kills per set. She's got five so far. The decision to take it over was Gabby Blossom catching everybody napping. And Maria Mallon says, my fault there is that's her attacker with Blossom in the front row in a 5-1. She has that ability to go over on second contact, and Maria Mallon has to stay right with her and defend her. Got the pass from Jordan Thompson. Wow. Send the right to Blossom and then touched over by Serena Gray. Thompson was, you saw her just charge towards that ball and got it over. And Penn State said prior to this one, we cannot lose track of her in any rotation, whether it be in the front row, the back row. We have to know where she is at all times. And I think that's why we saw the results we saw in set one. They're so aware of where Jordan Thompson is that hopefully the players around her can capitalize on that. And that's exactly what Cincinnati did in the first set. In the second set, a little bit more of Jordan Thompson, which is what you would expect. on the serve. Blossom to Gray. Got it. I'll tell you what, Gray delivering some really beautiful balls here in this second set. That time, giving Gray all the lines she needed to kill that slide. Perfectly placed. You mentioned she had a very strong freshman year before missing the NCAA tournament. And Thompson. 
Anderson, you see what she brings to the court, how exciting of a player she is and will likely be competing with the U.S. women's national team in 2020 in Tokyo. She played in the Volley Nations League tournament with Team USA this summer, one of, one of only three players with collegiate um, playing time still available to them who made that roster, led Team USA in points. They win that tournament, and it's the tournament that qualifies them for 2020 Tokyo. Pretty amazing. When you think about Gabby Blossom on the other side, who is having herself an all-around match thus far, this is her first season as a setter. Last year, she was primary, a, primarily a defensive specialist, but took over for Brianna Weiskircher, and she's done a nice job for the Nippy Lions. And so important, the court time that she gained a season ago. She wasn't in a position where they were going to use her as a primary setter, but how huge in her development as a player, knowing that they're going to need her in all six rotations this year to give her that court time and grow her experience and, of course, um, her confidence prior to this year. Pick her in to serve it for the Bearcats. Johnny Parker going up at it, down the line, and she got it. Johnny Parker, two-time All-Big Ten selection, led the team in kills during this NCAA tournament with good swings like that. And Parker, now with three kills on 12 attempts, has been a little quiet. Will she heat up in set two as Jordan Thompson has? Can't get that back over because it's a service ace from Serena Gray. Gray, who had 11 kills in that first round win. A sweep over Princeton. Thompson with the tip coming in, diving for it was Blossom. Johnny Parker goes up, approaches it. How about Hunter her right there to keep it going? And Mallon just too strong. Mallon is not afraid. Comes flying in out of the back row and takes a big swing at that ball. She finished that pit match with a big swing out of the back row. She is not going to back down. Two-point advantage for Penn State. Gray gets it over the net, a free ball opportunity, and Caitlin Horde sends up the 15. And we will take a break. We'll check this out. One through four, the top four national seeds. Baylor advancing on to the regional final for the first time in program hit Austin as Louisville takes down the Texas Longhorns. Meanwhile, later tonight, we'll see Stanford in action against Utah. And how about Wisconsin? Moving on with the Big Ten Player of the Year, Dana Redke doing an amazing job all season long, and the Badgers will face off against Nebraska tomorrow. So that is two Big Ten teams already who have punched their ticket to the round of eight. Of course, Penn State trying to be the third, and Minnesota as well battling Florida right now. Both have opportunities to move on to that round of eight. So the Big Ten, great performances so far here in the tournament. Penn State trying to even things up against the Bearcats. Here in the second frame. Caitlin Horde. You see they continue to feed her. She's got four kills now on nine attacks. And when Penn State has that perfect pass, sometimes it just looks so easy with their ability to terminate out of the middle. Clark to Maria Mallon. Here's Adria Oliver. Oliver on the attack error. Penn State trying to widen this lead. And Molly Alvey quickly calls a timeout. Interesting as Penn State, the first to 15, only scores two more points here. And Cincinnati's going to take another timeout. The thought that the Nittany Lions, again, 
is a team that's been in every NCAA tournament, seven titles to their credit. And they are looking to make it to the regional final. They will face, if they are able to advance, the winner of this one will face off against either Stanford or Utah. And for Russ Rose's team, this is a little bit different situation, given the fact that this is the first time since 2007 that a player on his team hasn't had a national championship title to their credit. Wow, that is interesting. Mia Reed graduated last year. She was a member of that 2014 title team. That's the last time the Nittany Lions have won it. Now, there is one thing that's familiar to this Penn State team, and that's Maples Pavilion. Yeah. As they were sent here last year in the tournament and played Stanford in that regional final match here before Stanford went on to win yet another national championship. Cincinnati led 12-11 in, in this set. Since then, Penn State has gone on a 6-1 run to grab hold of the lead. And I think it's happened because Penn State has been able to control first contact. Two keys for Cincinnati are going to be the pressure that they create from the service line. And then as Molly Adams said against Pitt, they can't afford to tip balls over. They at least have to take swings at out-of-system situations in order to create a little chaos for Penn State. Penn State is too good out of the middle when they're in the system. Adria Oliver, and you like the decision for Heckenmuller to quickly feed Oliver someone outside of number 23 in black. And the fact that Oliver just missed on the slide moments ago prior to that timeout, but Heckenmuller does not hesitate to go right back to her, and Oliver delivers. She had 14 kills in that win in five sets over Pitt. Gorell off the block and it spins out. And Tori Gorell, a story who we continue to revisit given the fact that she's just had to adjust and make so many changes throughout her Penn State career, but in every position she's been able to contribute. She's really had to reinvent herself. To think about moving from being a middle blocker to an outside attacker, that's a huge transition. And Co Coach Russ Rose said it just wasn't good recruiting on his part. That they're in a position where they needed her on the outside because of some losses he had in recruiting. You know, very candid about that. And so a lot on the shoulders of Tori Gorell to have to figure out a new position in her red shirt senior year. And boy, my hat's off to her. Not only has she done that, but providing some real leadership for this young team here in the regional. Terrell tips it over, Mallon is there, Heckenmuller sets Thompson out of the back row, block touch by Penn State. Here comes Caitlin Hoare on the slide. Penn State going at it again, Thompson in deep right. We'll try to give the ball back to Thompson, she can't get up in time. A great angle shot from Gorell and once more, she is rising to the occasion when they need her. She certainly is. The sharp angle here lands it right on the line of Libro for Cincinnati. Connor there, hoping that one was going to fly wide, makes the decision to let it go. A little water on the floor for Cincinnati. And that forces Kendall White to hold on to the ball for a few minutes before she gets to put it in play. White just short on that serve. And she's a player who has helped to impart some wisdom to this group. And she just plays kind of wide open. That's her personality. Yes. She's going to shoot you straight, no chaser. She said, I play exactly like my personality. She said, I'm very aggressive. I'm all in for my team. She's a player who doesn't look like she needs much firing up. She said one of her rituals is chugging a Red Bull or two prior to the match. <laughs> I'm not sure that she needs it. Yes, it is. All right. Yes. Loss of bump set from Kendall White. And Gorell, the Canadian, goes at it again out of Ontario. And she is continuing to heat up. She was solid in that first set now with seven kills for the match. And not just seven kills, but only one error. She's hitting 400 from the left side. Huge performance for Tori Gorell. Yeah. 
just touched the net. Tough serve. Thompson gets it over. Free ball opportunity. Blossom sets Lauren Clark, and Clark gets it. Took the angle off that pin, and she smacked it down. Penn State fans were wanting a lift on second contact from Cincinnati, but it won't matter because with the free ball, they send a fast one out to Lauren Clark, who realized very, very limited playing times over the course of the season. Here she is in the NCAA tournament with the beauty of a swing. And Mallon just too strong there, and Penn State continuing to pull away. 22-16, Cincinnati trailing this Penn State group. The Nittany Lions have a chance to even it up. Just three points away. It's the best three of five. You gotta get to 25, win by two through the first four sets. Coach Alvey said it's our composure and our consistency that got us here and that nothing needs to change. And I think that's why she calls the timeout here. Keep that composure, keep that consistency, keep them feeling confident as they move forward. And there's a group that's probably feeling pretty confident two national championships to show over the last three years for the Stanford Cardinal, and they will be up next against Utah as they start to trickle in and prepare for their match, getting a look at who their possible second-round opponent could be. Here's Catherine Plummer, of course, the two-time national player of the year, All-American who has had a phenomenal career with the Stanford Cardinal, and this is graduation weekend, and finals time for so many and you know, this is potentially the last time last weekend she will play in Maples Pavilion but what she and that senior class has done throughout their career you think about as freshmen what they were able to do come onto the stage win the national title in 2016 and they have oftentimes faced off against Penn State through the non-conference season or here in the NCAA tournament. And so when you have two great programs like Penn State and Stanford, it's an expectation that they say they, they look to meet and maintain. <laughs> Gabby Blossom is having herself a match thus far. Blossom with three kills now, 19 assists, four digs, three blocks. Calls her own number there and goes over in two. Great timing. Such nice court awareness from Blossom. Blossom also another captain for this group. Catches the tape, gets over. Hector Mueller sets Thompson. Right there is Giarly. Lauren Clark takes a hack at it. Bowska tried to get to it, couldn't save it. And now set point, Penn State. And you can see for Lauren Clark just the confidence growing with each swing, with each kill, as she just settles right into this match and into this Penn State lineup. Double contact from Penn State. They had just run off five straight points to get to set point. And now Cincinnati on the serve. If you're hoping to put some back there to someone back there who could create some chaos, Maria Allen is the one. But she's got a tall order. Lauren Clark gets it right back to her. Kendall White hits it over. And one of the rare swings. And she <laughs> celebrates, as does her team. They take the second set, 25-17. Oh, it's a good one here from the Stanford Regional. You'll Overlooking the Bay Bridge here on the West Coast. Good Friday, ESPNU. Blossom to serve it up. There's Oliver, and Oliver gets it going. 
And that's good news for Cincinnati if they can get the middle involved early, if they can go away a little from Jordan Thompson as we saw in set one and have some success from that surrounding cast. Oliver, sophomore out of Orangeburg, South Carolina. And there's Gray, just a quick up and down for the sophomore. And she was a part of that heralded freshman class, highly regarded as the number one overall just a season ago. She came in with Allison Kathy along with Johnny Parker, and now the service ace. And she has served well from behind the line tonight. Yeah, Serena Gray has been very good behind the service line. I think that was one of the big differences in set two for Penn State. They were a little better behind the service line than Cincinnati, and that was not the case in set one. Mallon to Hecka Mueller and back to Mallon. There's Oliver and Hecka Mueller keeping it alive. Jordan Thompson out of the back row, touched by the Nittany Lions. How about the defense from Penn State? And they do that without White on the floor. This is the half rotation where Kendall White is not out there. But these defenders, Jenna Hampton, one of them, 15 there and White, just absolutely going for it. We talked about the offensive numbers of Cincinnati being so good and compared to the rest of the nation. The defensive numbers not quite up there. But Penn State says we can win points on defense. And they're getting it done the hard way right now. And look at those numbers for Cincinnati, just in terms of how they rank. This is an area where they have really struggled all throughout the season. And again, they've got to play near perfect volleyball if they want to have an opportunity to advance and perhaps match the offensive firepower that their attackers bring. Tough ball there for Johnny Parker as that one's tight to the net. She does everything she can just to stay out of the net on her follow through there, but it's going to be another error, and that's a point for Cincinnati. The Libra O'Connor on the serve for the Bearcats. Blossom sets Parker once more, taking a little something off of it. Heckenmuller to Mallon, who also does the Sandy off-speed shot. Sees white jerseys fly to the floor, but they couldn't get to it in time. I really thought there's going to be a little too much air under that one coming off of Mallon's hand, but because she created hesitation, there was actually two players in position to make a play on that ball. The hesitation, and the winner is Cincinnati. As soon as you create hesitation from the defender, you've got the upper hand. And Ward hits that one just inside the boundary line. And Penn State is awarded the point. And those nice sharp angles out of the middle for Ward as she cuts that one away but catches that sideline. Coming into tonight's match, 23 kills in this tournament. She was hitting an even 500 tonight. She has five kills. Jordan Thompson right against that big block. And Hoard does it again. And Jordan Thompson with the crazy move there in the front row because she's a backcourt player. She couldn't reach above the net to play the ball. So you saw this funky, like, underhanded set move from her. And she was just like, I don't know what to do here to keep this ball alive when I have to play below the net. It's hard for a player <laughs> like Jordan Thompson to actually play below the net, folks. realize Lauren Clark, who's been thrown into the lineup here in the NCAA tournament, not only has to play across the front row, but she's serving for the Lynn Nitt Nittany Lions as well. After the serve, of course, we're going to see the substitution and now Holcomb into the backcourt alongside Kendall White. They will again pass two here as they consistently have. Holcomb, Blossom, and again, Caitlin Hoare just keep ringing up number 23 and white. And when that pass is there, is there, is there a defense for the swing from Hoare? There's going to have to be some block help. There is absolutely no way to defend Hoare one-on-one. Will Cincinnati make the adjustment? And Mallon with the angle. Mallon great on, yeah. angle, great Spin, the finish, the wrist movement from Mallon, and that's what you have to do as an undersized outside hitter. 
playing against a big time team like Penn State, her coach said she's learned how to score points. That's a great example of it right there. First team all conference selection is Mallon. Correll off the block of the Bearcats. It goes out of bounds. Point Penn State. There she is again. What a big swing from Borrell. And that time well off the net. Not an easy ball to terminate. Kendall White, the back-to-back -back Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year on the serve. First time a Nittany Lion has ever won that award in back-to-back -back years. Kept alive. And Gray is right there. Thompson tried to go for it, but Serena Gray said, uh-uh. Really tough ball. That ball is, anytime a ball is tight to the net and dying inside, the advantage should be to the blocker. So credit Gray there for just smothering that one as she should. Don't give the offense any chance there. They go to Jordan Thompson wow. White with a nice dig. Johnny Parker. Another dig from White. And you see why she is the two-time Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year from her Libero position. A transition opportunity for Cincinnati. They don't get a great first contact, but it won't matter. Feed the ball to Jordan Thompson. It looked like it was going to be a missed opportunity, but with Jordan Thompson, you've got someone who erases errors, and you also have that in Kendall White. Wow, look at her as she patrols the backcourt. I asked her yesterday about the opportunity to defend someone of the likes of Jordan Thompson, and does that give you a little extra added energy? And she sort of played it off, you know, being a Big Ten player. She said, I defend great players weekend in and weekend out, which is so true. She certainly does. But you have to feel like knowing the success that Jordan Thompson had at the Olympic level this summer, you got to feel pretty good when you get a piece of one of hers. That was Thompson's first kill of this set. We've seen 15 points go by now. The 16th point of this set in favor of the Penn State Nittany Lions. The 11 seed looking to take the lead in this match after going down in the first frame. What's so interesting though with you know, Kendall White's conversation about the fact that, you know, you face a Alexi Sun in Nebraska or a Dana Recky in Wisconsin. Wow. And that swing from Jordan Thompson, she ends up on the floor after a huge rip at the ball. Awkward look here. She's falling back. We've talked several times about how she seems, the ball seems to be behind her, but she's falling back as she takes a swing at the ball. And that could be a combination of things. The set a little off the net, or could be those tournament jitters. And that Jordan Thompson's just a few, a few steps early. She's beating the ball there and then happened to reach back to make a play on it. That was a little bit of a scary moment. Well, that was a scary shot there from Johnny Parker. And Parker, who now has... Four kills tonight. And what a great setting decision because Johnny Parker coming out of right back. Jordan Thompson is, is cheating into the middle to help block the middle. There is no right side attacker. But don't lose track of Johnny Parker because she's coming out of right back. And that's exactly what happened. Jordan Thompson cheating into the middle, loses sight of Joni Parker, and then she's chasing out to the antenna. And if Joni Parker is ahead of you, watch out. There's going to be a kill ahead. We we'll realize one unseeded team has already advanced today. Cincinnati trying to be the second. Two Big Ten teams have already advanced today. Penn State trying to be the third unless Minnesota beats it, beats them to it. They're still battling Florida. Great effort there. Blossom goes into the Penn State bench. Could not get to it but what effort you're expecting yeah. to see at this point of the season. Gabby Blossom flying into the bench. I've seen benches where the coaches would stay seated and say, no, 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 no. Not the Penn State coaches. <laughs> they vacate, and they're like, yeah, go for it. Dive into those chairs. <laughs> Meanwhile, their head coach, Russ yeah. Rose, just decided to stay put right there. Love it. <laughs>
You see a little of the expectation in terms of ball pursuit and defensive effort. When coaches clear out and expect their players to chase that one into the crowd, it says a little something about the program. That's a program that grows championships. Well, you think, you speak to just that championship caliber, obviously. We talked about Russ Rose not moving right there. He's like, I've seen this <laughs> a number of times over my 41 seasons. He was like, he was like two chairs to the left of the action. Yeah. He didn't need to go anywhere. <laughs> but not even a flinch, though, no, Missy. No. <laughs> He's been in all 39 tournaments. Come on. But back to just that championship caliber and, and what you've seen from a program like Penn State. I mean, they had that run from 07 to 2010, winning four straight national championships. Their last one coming in 2014. These players feel like we've got to hold our end of the bargain. Yeah, if, if most programs had won a championship in 2014, they'd be thrilled. But for Penn State not to have won since 2014, it feels like a draft. So interesting. That is it. That is the caliber of program that we're talking about. But I'll tell you, a team like Cincinnati, who's never been on this stage before, they're hanging in right yeah. there with the Nittany Lions. You better believe it. Johnny Parker, what a rocket off the arm of Parker. And Holcomb does a nice job there handling first contact. I still think that's one of the biggest differences we've seen from that first set where Cincinnati was able to get a win. Those secondary serve receivers alongside Kendall White have really stepped up. Parker, who was the Big Ten freshman of the year a season ago, and Maria Mallon says in her sophomore campaign, She's coming with some heat. Eight kills tonight. And she's the recipient of a really nice pass from Jordan Thompson, who we talk so much about her offense, but at six foot four, the way she handles the ball and serve receive and the things she can do defensively, pretty impressive that what a complete player she is. And watch out for the serve of Mallon as well. Heckenmuller sets Thompson on the pin. Blocked out of bounds by Penn State. A little extra sauce on that one as it goes well into the stands off of that Penn State block. And that's a fun matchup. Take a look at Horde across the net from Jordan Thompson. Jordan Thompson already has spent time with the Olympic team, and you have to wonder if it could possibly be in Horde's future an opportunity at uh, such a goal. We will continue to watch this matchup and see what happens again. Budding career for Caitlin Ford. And our Penn State New Lions take that 14-13. And remember, it was Maria Mallon serving so well early in the match with her jump serve and Johnny Parker with several errors in the first set early in the second set. Now Maria Mallon with the error, and we started to see Johnny Parker settle in. So, so much of this game is determined from the service line. There's Thompson taking the rip, ball coming our way, and we're tied once more. And you get the feeling so much of this match will be determined from the swing of Jordan Thompson as well. And you think about a player like Thompson, who again is kind of seen volleyball nearly year round after yeah. competing with USA Volleyball, Team USA. And I think she welcomes that. I mean, she doesn't shy away from it at all, knowing that she is the top offensive threat. And a wonderful pancake dig from the Bearcats. The defense coming up big there, but couldn't get to it from the kill from Gorell. We talked about how well Jordan has handled re-entering this team, and her team has welcomed her and, jo and done a great job of that as well. However, they're down one here as they try to tie things up at Stanford. Gorell. Out of the break, on the serve. And the White is there. Blossom to Clark, and Clark gets it to go down in middle back. Big swing from the freshman here, as we've said several times. Not a constant in this lineup, but with Kathy out and listed as day-to-day, -day, Clark coming up big, and Penn State 
after dropping that first set, now battling back, much of the same situation as they were against Townsend on their home court last weekend. They dropped that first set, and Coach Russ Rose says, you know, it's always tough, tough no matter who you're playing, because sometimes you're actually just playing with yourself. You're dealing with emotions. You know, and last weekend, it was for their older players, you know, their last time in rec hall, and there's a lot of emotion involved in that. And I think with each weekend, you're dealing with new emotions, whether you're young or old on this team. And so he's very real about the fact that sometimes the, the battle is against your own with against yourself. And just speak to just this time of year as a student athlete, wow. given the fact that you're in the midst of finals, mm -hmm. you're juggling your volleyball career. I mean, there's just so much that's at yeah. play at this point. As we took in practice yesterday, I think just about every sports information director that we talked to for each team mentioned that they had already had players, you know, visit the academic center to take finals yesterday. We were practicing for a regional, you know, for that round of 16. And there they are on the road studying, taking finals, trying to wrap up their classes. It is a really difficult time of the year to have your championship. And yet these young ladies, so many of them, academic honors as well, and academic honors to abound here in this regional amongst these four teams. It just says so much about the character of these young ladies. Thompson eases it up on the serve, making it tough. But Gray says you can't get to this one. And this is a pretty nice serve. Catches net tape, crawls over, but an even better pass from Tyndall White to make it possible to again run the ball to those middles. And Cincinnati continues to try to block those middles with just one block. And Adria Oliver with a nice angle, taking it to the floor. Trich Yarley checking in. She's in the front row for the Bearcats. Connor with the serve. Ford pushes it over. Jouse and Connor with the one-arm save. Mallon going up. And Penn State with the point. Bearcats thought that may have been a block touch. Molly Alvey only has one, one challenge remaining. What do you do here? She's going to use it. I think right about that one. So now Cincinnati has the advantage. 19-18. Connor on the serve to Kendall White. Gabby Blossom and there's Caitlin Ford. The block. Standing strong from the Bearcats. And Johnny Parker pulls them right back even. That one right in front of us. A good look at the big swing from Johnny Parker. She's been asked to do a lot for the team this year. And she said she feels like she's a lot tougher mentally than she was a season ago. And Certainly in her shots. She said she hopes in her shot selection. And that was a great shot selection there to go high off the block. It feels like that was an area where she improved most. And Mallon again off the block of Penn State. Point Cincinnati. Just an update to our viewers wondering the outcome of Minnesota, Florida. It's Minnesota who advances in a five set thriller between them and the Gators. They will face off against the Louisville Cardinals who are the unseeded Cinderella's of this tournament, making it to the regional final for the first time in program history. And so Wisconsin, Nebraska, and Minnesota have already advanced. If Penn State were to pull this out, four teams in the round of eight would come from the Big Ten Conference. That would be impressive. And that was an impressive swing and shot selection there from Johnny Parker. Parker now with eight kills on the night on 23 attacks. Mallon got to it. 
nice trip across the front row there for Maria Mallon as she's getting it done from both antennas. That's one of the things, that's one of the strengths of her game is how comfortable she is swinging from all areas of the floor. There is not a weak side of the court for Maria Mallon and she'll swing just as strongly out of the back court as well. Hey, how about from the service line? <laughs> Indeed, there goes Gorell. Hole in the block for Gorell. Again, as you continue to see blocking be an issue for Cincinnati as they try to block one on one out of the middle against Penn State. I don't know if they're going to have a lot of success there. And then that time, the ball to the outside and only one block home for Cincinnati. A lot of one blocker opportunities for Penn State and their offense making the most of it. Double digit kills for Gorell. She leads the team. Jordan Thompson dug out by Holcomb. There's Gray. <laughs> and you see the response from Holcomb's teammates as they celebrate for her after the huge dig from the Jordan Thompson swing. Get Stanford all they can handle. And how about with the exit of Pitt from the tournament? Penn State may not be the hometown team, but they have the opportunity now to be the home state team in that championship and perhaps pull a lot of fans in and use that home crowd to their advantage now. There's Jordan Thompson bringing him right back. Thompson with 19 kills tonight, still hitting above 300. And to a point we were making prior to a timeout earlier, we talked about, you know, the fact that Jordan had to rejoin the team after being gone all summer and how she's done such a nice job with her personality and demeanor of coming back and working her way back into this group. But Coach Alvey, a lot has to be said for the way that she has handled Jordan and the fact that they don't put too much on her shoulders. Of course, she takes a lot of swings, but she never looks uncomfortable. <laughs> Certainly not on that swing does she look uncomfortable. But she never looks like she feels the weight of the world on her shoulders. She has such a strong relationship with her head coach, and they really feed off of each other very well. 20 kills tonight for Jordan Thompson, who was a verbal commit early on to Syracuse, decided to open up and maybe explore some more of her options because there weren't a lot of offers out there. And she said in first visit with Coach Alvey and the staff, she said, I knew right away that this was the place for me. And it was actually a coaching change at Syracuse that even caused her to look elsewhere. Otherwise, I think she would have stayed put. But because of that coaching change and the uncertainty of the relationship, she decided to look elsewhere. And I think that speaks to how important that coach relationship is for Jordan and how close she is with Coach Alvey just uh, obviously it's been a good fit because not only has Cincinnati flourished but guess what Jordan Thompson has flourished as well. Indeed the NCAA kills leader she had 50 kills in a match earlier this season against the UConn Huskies the only player to do it in the rally scoring era and not only that we talk about the student athlete because I love to harp on that piece and the fact she's graduated with her masters and bachelors in to her bachelor's and then master's, there we yes. go, in criminal justice. And I talked about Academic All-Americans earlier, where she is a COSI, the second team Academic All-American, just the second volleyball player in Cincinnati history to receive that honor. And she is the first University of Cincinnati athlete in any sport to be both an academic and an All-American, both in the same year to be that Academic All-American and then a volleyball All-American. First UC athlete. Huge, huge accomplishment from Jordan Thompson. And we talked to her about that ability to manage the classroom and the court. And she said, you know, you just got to stay organized. But I like what she said about the fact that you got to separate the two. She said, when I'm at volleyball practice, it's a break from everything else. And I got to just zero in on volleyball. And then when I leave volleyball, I have to be able to zero in on my studies. It's a real separation of the two for her. Compartmentalizing for the redshirt senior. But, you know, she had the opportunity to play with some of the Lions on that. U.S. Women's National Volleyball Team with Haley Washington and Megan Courtney. Mm -hmm. Morell just hits it deep and gets it to go. And as Jordan Thompson, as you mentioned, played with Haley Washington and you know, played with Megan Courtney, having met those players face-to-face -face over the su summer, former Nittany Lions and many players from other storied programs, does it take a little of the mystique out of the matchup? When all of a sudden you're like, oh, I know some Nittany Lions. But they're just girls like me. You know, maybe it takes away some of that mystique and it you know, makes it a little easier to battle some of these top programs in the country. She always seems so even-keeled all throughout a match. 
and what she wants to do is help her program get their first ever win against the Nittany Lions. They're 0 for 5 coming into tonight's match, and now they have an opportunity at set point, excuse me, nearing set point. There we go. Yes, you're right. Now, <laughs> our ticker reflects such. And a timeout taken on the court, Abby Blossom, and that's how Penn State would work their way back into this match, but trailing by one, and Cincinnati with set point here in the third. Carolina Fausca on the serve. Tough one there. Kendall White handled it. Clark finds it. Parker gets it over. Bump set. Jordan Thompson going up. Does it. Third set belongs to the Cincinnati Bearcats. A golden opportunity that looked like it might be wasted when Penn State sent the free ball over. But again, at home. So they're down 0-2 at home to Wisconsin. And they come back and win that one in their final weekend of Big Ten play. They also had a reverse sweep early in the season at home on October 23rd against Illinois. So they're not afraid of a 5 7 Johnny Parker going with a little different serve. Stays on the floor. Is that what you were about to say? Yeah. <laughs> she decided to switch things up. Eka Mueller gets to a Jordan Thompson off the hands. Right out of the middle, and there's Caitlin Hoare. That's the bread and butter when they've gone to all season long, and it's worked. And the block doesn't work, but I like the fact that we see Jordan Thompson in the middle. There's some help block there from the left side, at least from Jordan Thompson. She's a player who obviously can give them a little help in the middle, and they really need it. That one sails long on the serve, and Cincinnati gets the point. Now Jordan Thompson. Back to serve it away. Three-time AAC unanimous player of the year selection. Couldn't get to that one in time as Gorell wins that challenge. A big swing into the backcourt for a kill. Prior to that, though, she had that swing where she just stayed on the floor and kept it in bounds. So not only is she coming up big in the kills department, but hitting for such a high efficiency. Now at 458 from the left pin. There's Kendall White out of the state of Indiana. Setting a program record with all-time career dudes leader. from Maria Mallon. Beckett Mueller with a nice push to the outside allows Maria Mallon to get ahead of the block. And so do you see just enough space there between the outside blocker and Gray can't quite close in time. And so speed beats size as Cincinnati comes up at that point. When you're watching Maria Mallon's game, what is it that you like about it? I like the, the action that she has with her wrist, the hand-eye control, the fact that she can move the ball all over the court. Great shot selection. And I like the fact that she is feisty. And again, notice we've got Cincinnati trying to give some block help in the middle. That was Maria Mallon that time now hanging out in the middle of the court. Unfortunately, she lost track of Jody Parker. And that's what can happen. You come over, try to help block in the middle against these really talented young middles for Penn State. And here comes Joni Parker flying out of right back with absolutely no blocker home for Cincinnati. So that is the risk there that Cincinnati takes by trying to help block in the middle. Johnny Parker now with 10 kills for, against her home state strength. Cincinnati once again. I think what I always enjoy, Missy, no matter what point it is in the match, are the celebrations from the players and just how pumped up they get from one another. It doesn't matter what uniform you're wearing or who you're rooting for. It's it's just fun to see. And especially for a player like Hecke Mueller, she goes back to serve. She's playing for her hometown of Cincinnati. She said, I grew up wearing the Bearcat on my T-shirt, and it certainly comes full circle. So to get to see a player like her play for her hometown, and 
Thompson's going to play the tournament. How about the reaction there? Jordan Thompson is so mad at herself for choosing to let that one fall. She was there in time to make a play on it. Gabby Blossom with the kill and now back to serve. And He's a fun player to watch for the Nippy Lions. Just taking something off of that nice decision. Savvy shot by the sophomore Maria Mallon. Wow, what Maria Mallon may lack in size, she makes up for with absolute game. Are you kidding me? Drops that one right on the line. Who wouldn't like to watch Maria Mallon play volleyball? This is just fun. Allen sport the white headband for the Bearcats. You can spot her on the court with that red hair as well. Spins the ball, ready to serve it. It comes at you with the Kendall White, handles it nicely, and Serena Gray hits it in the soft spot of the defense. And when Penn State has been really good in this match and able to spread the gap, they've done it with defensive efforts. Extending rallies, putting pressure on that Cincinnati offense. Cincinnati at some point is going to have to answer here with a few digs of their own. There's Thompson in the deep back pocket. One of the things that impresses me most about Jordan Thompson is her ability to handle herself and serve receive. And State's gone at her several times and she passes the ball so well. And that's why she has such a bright future in the international. 22 kills tonight for Thompson. Here's Johnny Parker. And Parker was blocked, but it goes out of bounds. And Penn State leads by two. Johnny Parker, one of those players who has a really interesting story, born with a rare condition, so it limits her hearing in both of the ears less than 50% but it doesn't affect her at all on the court. You see her hear aid, hearing aid in her ear. And she competes just fine. Yeah. I'll tell you one of the coolest things I saw this year, though, was when Penn State did a silent set, where I believe for the first 10 points, the gym was silent, in order to raise awareness for the hearing scared. This is a really incredible evening as I followed that on social media and saw you know, what they were able to do there to raise that awareness for hearing impaired. What a great uh, use of their platform. Both of these teams just trading kills back and forth in this rally scoring match 7-7 seven, seven now. Jordan Thompson is having at it, and then you just pick any player from Penn State, it seems, whether it's Gorell, Parker, Gray, Horde. And unfortunately, Cincinnati misses that serve there in Jordan Thompson's last rotation across the front row. Because Coach Russ Rose said, you got to do everything you can to score points when she's not in position to win the match. However, I'm not sure that there ever is a time that she's not in position to win the match because of the fact that Cincinnati's not afraid to use her out of the backcourt. Three balls sent over. Good opportunity for the Nittany Lions offense. Right there was prepared for that second contact over with Thompson. Adria Oliver has blocked solo stuff from Tori Burrell. And I think that's when Cincinnati would like to have back. A free ball opportunity where Oliver gets just one block on the slide play. But realize that one block is the former middle blocker, Burrell, who just is all over that slide. 17 blocks for the Nittany Lions. Good reaction from Hecken Mueller to keep it going. And Thompson is able to terminate. And notice three blockers up for Penn State. So while Cincinnati sometimes having trouble getting two up in the middle, Gorell coming all the way from left front to do everything they can to try to defend Jordan Thompson. And I tell you, after liking to have that last set back where they didn't give the ball to Thompson, they make no mistake about where that one is going. And Jordan Thompson against three blockers still can't be stopped. 19th match with 20 or more kills. Remember, she had 50 in a match against UConn back in October, and now she's halfway there. That one was a no-doubter from Tori Burrell. She says, okay, I'm going to match that intensity with a big thump of my arm. This is a senior who doesn't want to see her 
her career come to an end quite yet, and she is playing like it, putting this team on her back. Allen, block touch from Penn State. Gurrell going at it once more. Connor couldn't get to it in time. Gurrell now with 14 kills, and she is still hitting above 450. What a night. Coming in at a 500 clip for the red shirt senior, and the Canadian is putting the team on her back and lifting Penn State in this fourth set. Gray, who now has double-digit kills and three Penn State players have 10 or more kills tonight. And Cincinnati still searching for defense. They go with number four, Giarli, back into the match. She had a huge fifth set in their upset of Pitt where she came up with some big blocks. And right now, they're hoping she can dial up some blocks here again as defense has not come easy for Cincinnati. Mallon off the block, bounces off a Penn State player, Point Bearcats. And just when you think Penn State might be able to pull away, as Coach Russ Rose said in those rotations where George Thompson is in position to perhaps win the match, who is it who comes through? Maria Mallon. Time and time again, the Cincinnati team just won't go away. Mallon with 15 kills tonight. Setter hicking you on the serve. Here's Johnny Parker. And Parker! Sees a lot of black jerseys watching the ball bounce down on the floor. And Mallon again struggling here defensively. As she starts in a tight base to help in the middle. You see she's floating to the outside. And that was a huge opportunity for Johnny Parker with really no blockers home. And she chooses just to use the roll shot into the middle of the court, which should have been advantage Cincinnati. If she chooses to go with the roll shot, somebody's got to pick that up. Tough pass there to handle for Jordan Thompson. Keeps it in play. And Serena Gray, just what can you do with number 16 and white out of the middle? Gray putting holes in the floor here at Stanford. Realize Gray against one block is really no contest. No block help in the middle. That is a huge win for Penn State. Adjusting their attack error, 15-10, Penn State, the 11 seed, has the advantage. And again, we see Cincinnati trying to one-on-one -on -one block these Penn State middle blockers, and Penn State in return, three blockers up against Jordan Thompson. Just joining us, Miss Ingrid DeVore, Tiffany Green here with you from Stanford. It was Cincinnati who jumped out to a one-set-to-none lead over Penn State. The Nittany Lions rallied back. It's been a seesaw battle back and forth, and Penn State's trying to make it 2-2. Penn State also trying to become the fourth Big Ten team to make it to the round of eight. Could they hold half of those spots? While Cincinnati trying to follow up Louisville's performance in their upset of Texas to become the second unseeded team into that round of eight. Maria Mallon gets the touch call there, which would reward a point to Cincinnati. He signaled touch. Penn State no, certainly disagrees. Out, but he signaled touch. No, 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 no. It's everybody's call. But it's right down his line. I understand what you're saying, but it's everybody's call. The challenge, and they're awarded the point, 17-10. And stay currently on a 5-0 run in the fourth. Thompson is right there, dug out by Jenna Hampton, and no answer on the other side. Vince could not get to it. Jenna, excuse me, Serena Gray once more. 
And what's it going to take from Penn State, though? The big defensive transition. They actually dig up Jordan Thompson. Huge play there by Jenna Hampson. And those aren't just digs that we're seeing out of the backcourt for Penn State. Those are transition digs off of a huge rip from Jordan Thompson. And the effort again. Jenna Hampton with a huge play for Penn State. And I don't know about you, Missy, but that one felt like that hurt. I mean, Hampton just absolutely gave everything, just yeah. let her body go, just sacrificed it to the floor. She was a little slow getting up. I think that one did hurt. Another look, though, for Jordan Thompson, and she will not be denied a second time with a serious look of determination on that face. Jenna Hampton, wow. Yeah. What an effort. Now with that tough serve, here comes Johnny Parker, nine and white. And Penn State starting to run away with this one. Parker starting to do Parker type things, a really big swing from the Big Ten, Big Ten unanimous first team selection. And at this point in the match, we're going to get several stoppages of play here as these players, when they go to the floor, water on the court. And Jordan Thompson not quite satisfied with the result of the towel girl. She has a little extra to wipe up herself. And then we see a substitution coming in for Penn State, number 14, Kristen Krause. She'll come in to serve. for Jordan Thompson. Hecken Mueller pushes it out to Thompson once more. Two There's jigs by Krause who just entered the match. What a dig out by Hecken Mueller kept alive by Charlie Cobb but couldn't do anything with it. Penn State now marching out to a nine point lead. And hugs all the way around for Krause, who just enters the match as a serving sub and has two big digs out of middle back. But again, on these points where Penn State is pulling away, it's the defense out of the backcourt. It's the transition digs that are winning those points. Lauren Clark finds Mackenzie Connor right there. Thompson going up against the double block of Penn State. Here's Fausca. Fausca gets it to go down. Bouncing off of Hampton. And the complimentary offense for Cincinnati, as we saw in set one, a heavy dose of Jordan Thompson here in this one, but sometimes that set away gives them a better opportunity against just one or one and a half blockers. And Krause making the most of her opportunity. The freshman thicker. On the serve, serves it out, and you have to ask the question with Penn State kind of roaring back in this fourth set, creating some nice separation between the two. Does Cincinnati have enough in the tank to try to take down the big Penn State Nittany Lions? You have to wonder, I think with the defensive effort from Penn State and their ability to extend rallies, that's where Cincinnati gets into trouble. And once more, Jordan Thompson is blocked. Caitlin Ward and Johnny Parker are on the right side. And again, this is a ball that seems to be behind her. The ball is not out in front of her where she can go get it. It seems to be behind her, and that's when you don't get the best Jordan Thompson swing. Penn State drawing closer to evening up the match. Second Mueller to Fauska and access denied. Set point, Penn State. And defense has been the difference. Whether it's been out of the backcourt or the blocking at the net, Tori Gurrell so good both offensively and defensively all night long. Kept alive, free ball opportunity. Here come the Nittany Lions. Johnny Parker right into the dig of Heckenmuller. Too strong from Jordan Thompson. 
and Penn State. This is a good one. Buckle up. Eight, Kendall White says, let's keep it rolling. Three straight points from the Nittany Lions. White again, another tough serve. Mallon goes at it. The block bounces back on the other side for Penn State. They're up 9-5. A beautiful serve from Kendall White. And again, it's the block at the net. Make it 14 and a half for Penn State. Cincinnati has registered one. A huge defensive difference here in this match. That one looked to be going out of bounds. Kept alive by Mallon. Here's Blossom to Parker out of the back row. Wow. Big thud dug out by Jordan Thompson. Here's Gray. Misplayed but pushed over wisely by White. And there she is again on the defensive side. Big swings but credit Kendall White. If you, senior for the Nittany Lions. If you think you can only do so much as a Libro, you might be wrong. Kendall White doing it with digs, doing it at the net, doing it from the service line, looking like a senior with absolutely no quit. Huge dig on that Jordan Thompson swing. She doesn't just dig balls up. She plays them with such finesse. These balls are transitionable. These balls are balls that the setter has chases on, hard hit balls that Kendall White is able to handle so easily. And I'll tell you, as a coach, you don't want anybody else at the service line. Kendall White, when you're in that position where you have to change sides of the court, you know, that can kind of be a little awkward for a server. Not for Kendall White. She's back there asking for the ball. And then after the next point, she's motioning to the guy, give me the ball quick. She wants to put the ball in play and keep it going. Three-time All-Northeast Region selection. You see her in the huddle, rallying her team, telling them, let's go. Only five points away from 15 and closing out Cincinnati. Meanwhile, the Bearcats have pulled a climb out of. Who is it going to be? We know what Jordan Thomas can do. And She's gone off with a match high, 28 points. But can the defense of the Bearcats match that intensity of their opponent? Missy Whittemore, Tiffany Green, here with you. Bottom half of the hour from the Stanford Regional. Penn State made it to the Regional Final last year before Dropping in that round on this court to the Stanford Cardinal. Cincinnati is trying to make their first ever appearance. And Maria Mallon with absolutely all the shots. That time she just turns on it down the line. A little extra heat on that one. Mania Hecken Mueller trying to see her hometown school do something they've never done before. The center's done. McKenzie Connor is ready. Mallon once again rips it. Wow. This is good regional volleyball, isn't it? How about Maria Mallon? Moments ago, rips one down the line, this time right into the center of the court as she finds the smallest of holes in that Penn State block. And it's a formidable block. They got 14 and a half of them on the night. I love the fire in which Maria Mallon plays with, registering a double-double. The quick in this team. But Tori Garrell says, don't get too confident. Don't forget about me. Tori Gorell, who led the way early, now has 15 kills. She's joined at 15 with Johnny Parker. And the stars have come out for Penn State. Late in this match, Johnny Parker has found her stride. Kendall White has risen to the top. The names that we expected coming through in clutch moments. When you talk about next player up and players who are ready, Kristen Krause, who we saw in that fourth set with a couple of big digs and behind the service line, and here she is again. Ballon drops it off 
the hand of White couldn't get to it, and Maria Fallon said, I will single-handedly do whatever yes. I need to do. Three kills, three different shots. Blonde, seam of the block, right into the middle of the court, and sharp angle off hands for the last one. And I was thinking Cincinnati's got to, they got to get Jordan Thompson to the front row, but maybe not. Maybe they needed to keep Maria Mallon up there. She has got the hot hand in this fifth set, but of course, they're happy to see Jordan Thompson back up there at the net. And remember in that first set when they were able to take down Penn State 25-20, it was because of the complimentary players around Jordan Thompson where they had success. Tough serve. Hampton handled it. There's Mallon keeping it alive. Heckenmuller to Thompson. And Kendall White is still able to get a hand on this, merely to make a play on this huge Jordan Thompson swing. She had to sit back there, three rotations in the back row, and she was patiently waiting for that opportunity. When you look at just how much court Kendall White is uh, able to cover, you just sit back and have a lot of respect. Meanwhile, the tandem query in this regional semifinal. Out of the back row, there was Johnny Parker, Heckenmuller, and Mallon goes for it right to Kendall White. Serena Gray. And you feel like if Penn State gets that transition dig opportunity, and that, that was an easy ball from Cincinnati, that their middles are going to put it away because consistently Cincinnati has not been able to get a double block up against those middles who we know are so talented. Here's Thompson off the block over the head of White. And that's why first swing opportunities are so important for Cincinnati because as the play is extended, the advantage swings toward the Nittany Lions. That first swing kill opportunity is a must-have there for Jordan Thompson. trying to make sure they don't see another set in this tournament. Johnny Parker just getting better and better, as you would hope. In it. Oh, and I think we have an early serve here from Gray, as they're going to tell her just a minute. We're making a substitution over here, not quite ready. She was ready. She's like, look, we, we've got the momentum. Yeah. We've got the energy. Let's, let's keep it flowing. The white foul on the floor. That serve, and she checks right back in. Cincinnati will certainly take it. Any point at this point that Penn State gives away. And again, Cincinnati with their defensive substitution as they bring Giarli onto the court to block on the right side. No setter on the court. It'll be a bump set from their Libra. Parker on the approach, and off the block touch, Penn State sees match point. And Parker doing a really nice job here. As this match has gone on, her attack, the way she got off the court, huge, big approach at that ball. She has all that court in front of her to work with. Lauren Clark serves up match point for the Nittany Lions. Bump set from Heckenmuller. Jordan Thompson lets it sail too long, and Penn State is headed to the regional final. For the third consecutive time, the Nittany Lions are going to be one of the final eight teams in all of college volleyball. And it's official that four of those eight, half of the teams already into the round of eight, will hail from the Big Ten Conference. All four of them ranked in the ABCA top ten in the final poll. 
No other conference had more than two in the top ten for the dominance of the Big Ten on display here at Stanford. Final. Good